Welcome back to part two of the Vermont House Human Services Committee on Wednesday, May 12th. And uh, this um, part of our meeting, we will be um, hearing and talking with Legislative Counsel Michelle Childs as she um, reports to us um, and goes over the um, amendment that is um, has been suggested, uh, well, the amendment that, has, that um, has been passed by Senate Judiciary and presented on the Senate floor today um, positively. So it's going now for third reading. Um, committee, do you wanna see the language? Um, uh, Julie, is the language on the committee webpage? Yes, it is. Okay, so why not, for those who were listening on YouTube, the language is on um, the Human Services Committee webpage. Um, Michelle, I think it's probably fine to go over the, um, the three um, concepts and uh, folks, if you want to look at the language, why don't you go on um, the web page in case we have questions. Thank you, um, Michelle. So, um, so the committee made, uh, Senate Judiciary made three changes to the House version. Um, the first change was in section one in the intent section. And in the intent section in the House passed version, it said it's the intent of the General Assembly to decriminalize possession of 224 milligrams or less of buprenorphine. And they changed it to say that it is the intent to remove criminal penalties for possession of 224 milligrams or less. So just not a substantive change, but something that they were uh, more comfortable with in terms of language. Um, the second change is that- um, I'm, I'm sorry, Michelle, I was going to, I was just going to say, I think that that intent was potentially a holdover from the first iteration of the bill when it left um, House Judiciary and there was a larger amount. I don't know. I that may, I have to say, it's all a blur at this point. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of versions of this one. Um, so that may be true. Uh, the second change is that they have, um, uh, added a sunset, and so uh, so the the proposed so this will take effect. Um, actually, I'll I'll couple it. Is they made um, uh, they made it effective on passage. So that, I guess that's the second change. Um, and they made it effective on passage. The House version was the default of July first, um, but they said you know if it's going to save lives, let's let's get it working as soon as possible. And then the third change is that they have they put in a sunset, so it'll take effect upon uh, passage, and then um, it will sunset July first, twenty twenty three. So essentially in two years, and so you'll have an opportunity for that legislative year to take a look and see whether or not you think it still makes sense, and you can um, eliminate that sunset or extend it if you choose. And that's that's it. I, I have to admit, um, I'm pleasantly surprised. And given the fact that the uh, this was not on the um, pre-agreed upon list of bills that the Senate would necessarily take up this year since it passed after crossover date, and there seemed to be a time when um, it was going to stay there, and um, now it passed. So. Um, we've got some questions, Jessica, um, Representative Brumstead and Representative Wood. I thought Representative Wood, I think you raised your hand first if you want to go first. But I um, Just a quickie, it's more of a process question. I've always wondered about this. I, you see sunsets every once in a while in bills. How, how, how do we remember that in 2023, we wanna look at this and not just like, is there any sort of tickler for sunsets so that people know, um, oh, you better take a look at this so it doesn't just go away? So um, I have to check, I'll double check, but I think we keep an internal list 
of sunsets. And so we keep in contact with our chairs around certain provisions that we know are going to sunset. Um, and those are kept. We also include that in our act summaries so that they're specific. So you can kind of always be able to find in the act summary whether or not something has a sunset date. Um, and, uh, and then also usually, uh, you know, there's advocates and people who are tracking these things that make us well aware beforehand, uh, you know, that something's coming up and we, we need to put it on the list to take a look at it. Um, so I think in the past, we haven't had all those kind of safeguards, but I think, you know, in more recent years, we've been doing that because the use of the sunsets has really, I, I think, probably increased over the last several years and there's so many and it and you're right it is easy, it would be easy to lose track of that that's good to know because i i think that it makes sense to have sunsets it, it does make us look back and make sure that everything we intended is actually happening and that it's working well it's just that i it, it is important for us to know about it so we don't just let something slip sure. thank you mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm just um, uh, curious, Michelle, um, in, in that first instance of amendment, decriminalize versus remove criminal penalties, is, is there a nuance that I'm not understanding? So like, what is the nuance that, um, that is changing that language? It, does, it, does it say the same thing in different words or is it saying something slightly, slightly different? I think it, it's open to interpretation. I think we use the word decriminalize oftentimes when we're, and it means removing criminal penalties. So the substitute language is exactly what that means. But sometimes when we've used the word decriminalize, like when we, uh, when you, in 2013, you decriminalized cannabis, but you didn't remove all the penalties, you substituted civil penalties for criminal penalties in that particular case. You're not doing this here. And so Senator Sears is like, well, it's more akin to legalization than decriminalization. Um, but legalization is sometimes can be kind of a, um, it sounds as though it's more like an affirmative you know, statement rather than you're just taking punishments away. <laughs> and so, um, so usually the terminology that we use is either decriminalize or removal of, of criminal, or in the case of legalization, removal of criminal and civil penalties. So, okay. So they, they all I work. work. Okay. Okay. They all, all right. work. <laughs> just, just wanted to, uh, it was obviously important to somebody, so I wanted to understand. And Sears, I think, was a, uh, you know, I think it, particularly at the beginning um, where he started out, um, I think, you know, he's talked about, he, he started out not supporting uh, the idea. And he's like, well, this isn't decriminalized because it's actually legalized because we're removing all penalties and there's no penalties. And I get, you know, I think it's in some ways it's a little bit semantics, but um, but I certainly see his point and um, and he was more comfortable with the saying just removal of criminal penalties. So they're they're all correct. Um, OK, thank you. Right. Um, other questions? Um, thoughts about what the Senate have has done? Um, I, uh, Representative Whitman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think uh, Representative Rumstead and Representative Wood both asked my other questions I was going to ask. I'll just say I'm supportive of the effective on passage. Good change. Mm -hmm. Um, basically because I, I think next week where, where, um, where I understand it is right now is that, um, Senator Sears reported it on the Senate floor today. Um, it will be up for third reading and passage tomorrow, which is Friday. Um, there will be a token session 
or does it have to, or does it wait a day? Um, it will. So it'll it will, it'll be third reading tomorrow. Then it waits a day, and so, so then it will be up for action. We uh, on notice on Monday, which we don't meet, but we're moving the calendar ahead. So um, doing calendar math, it would be um, up for action on Tuesday. Um, and uh, given that, if people are comfortable and assuming that I don't come back to you with Michelle, with something has happened on third reading, which we don't imagine it will, um, I would entertain, um, I'd like to take a straw poll um, and have people raise their hand if they um, uh, support us concurring with the Senate proposal of amendment. If you could raise your hand, your, 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 your little yellow hand. Okay, and mine too, I didn't, okay. Um, thank you and I have, um, Representative Gregoire, I will check in with him in terms of, of that. We have a few days um, for that. So unless there is um, any change, um, I will um, let the speaker know that we are ready to do it on um, Tuesday. And uh, similar to what we did with the PFAS bill, this is a strike all. So, um, so it looks like, or, or you know, um, so it, it, it looks like there are more changes than in fact there really are. Um, and so I'll just try to make sure that that's clear. Um, One thing that I will just mention and um, is that uh, just in, in case folks on the floor get confused at all is just a reminder about the way that we do sunsets now is you actually repeat the language showing the way that it would look at the time it's repealed and then you have that, that take effect. Um, so sometimes people get a little confused about, well, wait, why is that language the same in two sections and different effective dates? And that's just the way that we do sunsets now. In the old days, we used to say, you know, those changes are repealed, but we have a different process now, but sometimes it can be tricky on the floor. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Michelle, thank you. Thank you very sure. much. Good to see Absolutely. you again. Appreciate your nice work. To see you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.